So this is the next question, 6C. The question is long concentric and right conducting cylinders in free space at R is equal to 5 millimeter and R is equal to 25 millimeter in cylindrical coordinates have voltages of 0 and V0 respectively. Okay. So if the electric field intensity E is equal to minus 8.28 into 10 power minus 3 AR at R is equal to 15 millimeter, then find the value of V0 and charge density on the outer conductor by using the Laplace equation. Okay. So here in this case, we need to be applying the boundary condition okay in order to solve the boundary conditions here of a, a, a cylindrical capacitance while deriving it we have discussed about the boundary conditions right that we need to be applying here so if you want to refer that video related to boundary conditions of cylindrical capacitance it is uh, available in our playlist okay we have uh, created the videos for you all so if you want you can refer this video of cylindrical capacitance it might be appearing on the top right of your screen now so click that video and you can refer it okay so let's get back to the question so yeah, according to the given boundary condition at r is equal to 5 millimeter that is we need to be representing r in terms of meter only while we are solving so that is 0 0.005 meter we have whenever r equal to 5 5 millimeter the uh, voltages are 0 okay we have V is equal to 0 at R is equal to 0 0.005 meter similarly at R is equal to 0 0.025 meter the value of V is equal to V naught okay from cylinder capa cylindrical capacitance this is the value of voltage when we apply the boundary condition that is VR V of R is equal to C1 log R or lan R plus C2 okay now first apply the first condition that is v of r that is 0 0.005 is equal to 0 right when v is equal to 0 in case of r is equal to 0 0.005 so that's why i have substituted it so here to substitute the value of uh, this to here in a 0 is equal to c1 lan of r that is uh, 0 0.005 plus c2 so that's why from this equation we are getting the value of c2 that is c2 is equal to minus c1 lan 0 0.005 so name it as equation 1 also apply the second condition that is v of 0 0.025 equal to v naught okay so in place of here represented by v naught is equal to c1 lan of so now in case in this case the value of r is 0 0.025 plus c2 right so name this as equation 2 okay so now in this equation we can substitute the value of equation uh, so c2 which we have num uh, named here as equation 1 so put equation 1 in equation 2 that is v naught is equal to c1 lan 0 0.025 minus c1 lan 0 0.005 in case of c2 then v0 is equal to take c1 common so in these two terms c1 is common so c1 into lan of 0 0.025 minus lan of 0 0.005 so this is of the form log a minus log b so log a minus log b in general is log of a by b so v0 is equal to c1 into log of sorry lan of 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.005 so if we divide this the answer we are getting is log 5 so here from this case c1 we can get as v0 divided by log 5 okay so this c1 you can mark it as equation 3 then uh, substitute back this equation substitute this value of c1 back in this equation in order to get the value of c2 okay so if we substitute back the value of uh, c, uh, c1 in this c2 equation the answer is c2 is equal to minus v0 by la, lan 5 into lan of 0 0.005 so this is the value of c2 okay then now what we need to be doing is we need to be calculating the value of v0 so we, we are going to use the relation of e is equal to minus del v that is e is equal to minus do, uh, d by d do, dv by dr into ar vector that is e is equal to in place of the uh, dv by dr we need to be writing it as v0 divided by lan 5 into 1 by r okay that is uh, v is equal to v0 divided by lan 5 into 1 by r since we are doing it with respect to our ar vector then substitute the value of e which is given in the question 8.28 into 10 power minus 3 ar vector is equal to this term into ar vector so you can cancel ar here from both sides so v0 is equal to 8.28 into 10 power minus 3 into the value of r is 0 0.015 that is 15 millimeter okay into lan 5 okay and if we simplify this the answer approximately for v0 we are getting it as 200 volt okay so this was the solution for this problem pause the video and refer it down and note it down okay so this is the next question one simple question here that is find the force per meter length between the two long parallel wires separated by 10 centimeter in air and carrying current of 100 ampere in opposite directions okay so here 
we need to find the force per meter length between two long parallel wires okay so in the question they mentioned it has two parallel wires and also separated by 10 cm in air and carrying current of 100 ampere in opposite direction so that's why we have in opposite directions we have the current of 100 amperes in both the directions okay so that's why we have 100 ampere both the directions so we are having two current quantities we need to be finding a force per meter uh, per meter length we have the formula for that f is equal to mu naught i1 i2 divided by 2 pi r as you might be knowing this relation okay then the standard value of mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 amperes per meter so here in this case mu equal to mu naught okay since we are doing it in a, a free space that is in air okay in air medium they mentioned in air medium that is equal to free space only so mu equal to mu naught that is a, a absolute permeability its value is 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 amperes per meter then substitute the value of mu naught in this equation 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 i1 i2 that is current in opposite direction it is one and the same 100 ampere only so 100 into 100 divided by 2 pi into the value of r they mentioned it as 10 centimeter convert it into meter that is 0 0.1 okay then f is equal to 2 pi and 4 pi you can cancel it 2 pi 1s are and 2 pi 2s are so then uh, 2 into 100 into 100 that is a uh, then if we multiply these two terms it is 10,000 okay then we have uh, 10 here since we are getting here it has 0.1 okay so 0.1 into 2 so here we have 0.1 okay 0.1 ones are and 2s are so 0.1 into 20 with that we are getting it as 2 so here 20 into 10 power minus 7 into 10,000 is represented as 10 power 4 so minus 7 plus 4 is minus minus 3 and here we have taken 20 so we can round it off to 2 into 10 power minus 2 so 10 power minus 2 so we can write it as f is equal to 0 0.02 newton per meter okay so this is the value of force per unit length okay so this was one simple problem you can uh, note it down this might be coming for 4 to 5 marks okay so the thing is the formulas you need to be remembering okay yeah hello everyone so welcome to this session. So till now we have discussed uh, the concepts of uh, magnetization, magnetic flux density and all of them, force between differential current elements and force on differential current, current elements and we have seen a uh, few problems related to them. Okay. So now we have seen one problem in the last session which we have had three sub questions related to force on a moving charge, right? So now let's uh, get our uh, what to say importance on this important topic that is magnetic boundary conditions. Okay, so this topic is very very important and I think many many times repeated question. Okay, that is magnetic boundary conditions. Okay, so now what are these magnetic boundary conditions? Let us see that. Okay, so before that let's analyze this figure. So here we have a magnetic medium. Here, this is one magnet which has one certain amount of charges in it. Okay. And this is the magnetic field intensity which I have drawn here is from both the upper side as well as the lower side. And the length of this magnetic uh, magnet, or we can call it as a simple magnet, is called as given as delta L. Okay. And uh, here, these two directions are represented as HT1, that is the magnetic field intensity due to this uh, position 1. And uh, magnetic field intensity due to its position 2 is represented as HT2. Okay. And mu1 and mu2 are the permeability which are uh, provided by this magnetic medium. And here, this is the direction of propagation is given as AR12. And here, this is one the cylindrical medium where the upper surface is called as the area delta S. So, you know, upper and lower surface, both of them are called as area, which is represented as delta S. And also, this upper surface is called as the uh, magnetic flux density is coming out of this surface that is represented as Vn1 okay and also magnetic flux density which is coming out of the lower part is represented as Vn2 okay so now this figure shows the boundary conditions between two isotropic means and this is isotropy that is upper surface as well and lower surface homogeneous linear materials with the permeability that is given as mu1 and mu2 okay so now apply Gauss law for this 
See, we have seen in the last uh, last sessions that uh, there is one relation for uh, when you apply cost law in magnet in magnetic field that is surface integral of v dot ds is equal to zero. Okay. So uh, using this equation, we get one more relation that is we find that v n one delta s minus v n two delta s is equal to zero. Okay. What is this v n one? So v n one is the uh, upper side upper surface into the area delta s minus the lower surface uh, into delta s is equal to zero. So why this is equal to zero? Because since the upper surface, upper surface and the lower surface are equal, they are symmetrically equal to each other. Okay, since it's a cylindrical surface, so we can say that V n one delta is equal to V n two delta. S, okay. So if we take this V n two delta is to other side and this bring it zero to other side, we get this equation V n one delta is minus V n two delta is equal to zero. So now from this equation, we can say that delta is if we take common outside and take this to other side, that delta is goes away. And we can say that V n one is equal to V n two. That is magnetic flux density moving out of the surface one and magnetic flux density moving out of surface two. Both are equal. Okay. So therefore, from this relation, we can uh, write that V n one can be represented as mu one into H n one. Okay. Since V is equal to mu times H. Okay. Similarly, V n two can be represented as mu two into H n two. So from these two relations, we can get the uh, our relation for H n two that is mu one by mu two into H n one. Okay, so therefore from this way we are getting the relation of H n two. Okay, so now we need to note one thing that is normal component of V is continuous, but the magnetic field intensity H is discontinuous by the ratio of mu one by mu two. Okay, here the normal component of V is continuous, but magnetic field intensity problem that is H n two. Is a discontinuous, which, which is providing a ratio of uh, mu mu one by mu two. Okay, so therefore, v n one is equal to v n two are continuous. That is, normal component of v are continuous, but the magnetic field intensity, if we uh, substitute this equation as mu one into h n one equal to mu two into h n two, we won't be getting h n one equal to h n. Okay, we will be getting h n two is mu one by mu two times h n one. Okay, so therefore, they are discontinuous by the ratio of mu one by mu two. So now use the Ampere's law, which we have derived already. That is, uh, line integral of h dot dl is equal to i. Okay, using that, take the counterclockwise strip around the path h t one delta l minus h t two delta l is equal to k delta. L, okay. So what is this k? K is the assuming boundary may carry the surface current k. So this is k is uh, represented as the surface current which uh, is having which has the varying values. It is not having a fixed value, so therefore it is represented as k. Okay, which which you need to be having different values of current. Now, what is this equation here? So, if you see this figure here, H T one. Okay, counter clockwise. So, this is clockwise strip here. Okay, if they if we take the counter clockwise strip uh, with the differential uh, length of delta L, so H T one delta L it will move it will move it like this. And again, if it comes like this, we can see that uh, it's moving in this direction, but H T two is in opposite direction. It is it is in the direction of this magnetic medium, so this would be minus H T two delta L is equal to the current uh, the current induced by this magnetic medium. It might be varying. This is for a particular magnetic field, but uh, for uh, there we will be having different magnetic fields and we will be having different current. Okay, so that's why we can say that H T one delta L minus H T two delta L is equal to K delta L. Okay. So now using this relation, we can also derive this uh, equation that is. H T one minus H T two is equal to K by taking the delta L from both the sides here. Okay, we can cancel this. So H T one minus H T two is equal to K. So therefore, H one minus H two, and by taking this H T one and H T two, that is, we can get the direct relation of uh, electric magnetic field intensity cross A R one two, A N one two equal to K. So therefore, H T one minus H T two is equal to A N one two cross K. Okay. So this A N one two would be uh, doing the cross product with this. Uh, uh, The uh, magnetic current element provided by the unit vector of an one two. So therefore, now H T one is again since B is equal to mu times H. So therefore, the we can uh, substitute this as B T one by mu one minus B T two by mu two is equal to K. Since H is equal to B by mu. So this is the relation of magnetic boundary condition which we obtain. Again, this is very very important and multiple times repeated question. So please note it down. Okay. So So here is one more important question, which is there in the model paper, question number eight p. That is derive the equations for magnetic circuits with the suitable diagram. Okay. So here draw one diagram where the voltage source here is in 
in terms of magnetic circuit it is represented as em okay and here is the phi flowing a flux flowing through this magnetic circuit along with the resistance then consider a magnetic circuit em is equal to n times i that is equal to line integral of h dot dl since uh, line integral of h dot dl is equal to i when we this relation we are getting it when we are solving for ampere's law and here uh, so that's why uh, ni is equal to line integral of h dot dl where this n represents the number of turns in a particular circuit okay we know that in general r is equal to v by i in terms of electric circuits so that's why for magnetic circuits this is uh, r is equal to em by phi okay and it is measured in amperes per paper where this r here in this case we are uh, calling it as reluctance okay yeah so here this is called as reluctance this is the magnetic circuit and the required equation which we are getting from ampere's law number of turns okay then uh, reluctance then here we have some more equations in you know, for magnetic circuits we can uh, note it down there are few equations you want to note it down that is j is equal to sigma times e b is equal to mu times h del dot b is equal to 0 del dot h is equal to a i is equal to surface integral of j dot ds where this j is called as the current density phi is equal to uh, surface integral of b dot ds and t is equal to mu s by l okay where this s is the L is the length and S is the surface of the magnetic, so magnetic surface bounded by the region of magnetic circuits. Okay, so this was the answer for this magnetic circuits. Okay, pause the video and note it down. Okay, yeah. You also, if you want to refer the videos uh, related to magnetic boundary conditions, we have uh, created a playlist of all the conceptual videos of this subject. You can go to that playlist and you can check the video of magnetic boundary conditions. Also, it might be appearing in the top right of your screen now. Okay, you can note it down and you can click that video and you can go there and watch it.